in the love of Jesus Christ to everyone here. If you're chewing on a bagel, chew harder. Keep going. If you have a good donut, make sure there are two and share with the person next to you. Um, we are here for a special morning. Now, we, we had something planned today where Shereen David, who's right here next to me, who is our Director of Mission and Outreach, was going to make a presentation to you, which she'll make next week instead. When this morning we found out suddenly, joyfully, explosively, happily, that Bishop Laurent Banda and his wife Chantal Banda were here from Rwanda, from the Shira Diocese visiting. I didn't know they were here. It was joyful. They said they were going to come and work with, worship with us, which made it doubly joyful. When he said that, Shereen went up to him and ambushed him. The, the, the nerve of her, I mean, the absolute rudeness to go up to the man and say, since you're a guest here, will you please speak? But, but the big thing that's going on is, we need for him if he'll give us grace. And he said he would give us grace, and he would speak. And the reason is, through his many visits with you, I think the first time he was here, I don't even think he was yet the Bishop of Rwanda, the very first time. Were you, were you actually Bishop quite yet? You have not been appointed. Just elected, but not yet, there's not yet a um, consecration. He keeps showing up early. <laughs> he keeps showing up early. He's testing the waters, and if he gets a negative vibe, he'll just pass on the opportunity. So now he has been elected as the Archbishop of the nation of Rwanda. An enormous task. The souls of the people of Rwanda, especially the Anglican souls, are under his charge. Something for which he needs the Holy Spirit, the love of Christ, our support, our encouragement, our deep and profound prayers as a people of God who love him from afar, our visits to Rwanda. We need to go there and be with him and be with this uh, group of faithful Christians there. And with that being said, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and lift your hearts as I pray. Then I'm going to give the microphone to Shereen as our Director of Mission and Outreach. Lord, Father, God, thank you. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the mission, Lord Jesus, of your gospel. You charged us, Lord, with taking the gospel to the world and telling everyone of salvation in your holy name, of baptizing everyone in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And in doing that, you have sent us your Holy Spirit to bless your church, to enliven it, to empower it, to advance it. And in doing so, you have called up mighty leaders in your church, like in the times of the Old Testament, like in biblical New Testament times. And in this case, you've raised a great bishop, and you have blessed him and, and honored him by giving him the humble privilege of being an archbishop of your church. Send your Holy Spirit upon this dear man. Lift him and be with him moment by moment. Give him wisdom, give him strength, give him grace. Give him the power to do what you have given him to do. And in doing so, Lord, glorify yourself. Lift the name of Jesus to the world, so that all who come to you may be saved. And in the precious name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Archbishop Alec Chantal, we love you. We've always loved you. We'll be by your side for whatever you need. You are in our hearts. A surprise visit today. We're thrilled. We are absolutely thrilled. Shereen, will you please come and take over? It was your show to begin with. I have no privilege to be up here but by you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. And this is not my show. I'm borrowing it from Father Ben. It's his show, usually. Um, we are really, really just delighted to have uh, now Archbishop Manda, Kambanda and Chantel here today. And uh, I've got to know them over several years, and they're some of my favorite people. And I'm looking forward to you guys hearing from them today, or from Archbishop Manda. Remember, keep remembering saying his, his title, new title, we get used to it. Um, if you will recall, we've been talking about generous justice here in the Rector's Forum, and um, I think R Rwanda as a country, as a nation, is just a shining example of how the church um, under Bishop Banda, Archbishop Banda's leadership is, is um, living out what it means to be just people and living out what it means to be images of God and um, dealing with one another with great justice and grace. So I'm going to hand it over now to Archbishop Wanda so he can share more about his story and about the work in Rwanda and how God is at work there.
Thank you very, very much. Good morning. Good morning. It is a joy to be here and, uh, and to be able to share with you what God is doing and what He has done. Uh, we are happy to be here. We have been traveling um, state size now almost what? Uh, it's going to be a month and we are going home back uh, to Rwanda uh, this coming Sunday. It is a joy to be here. It is the news that you have heard. We have been serving in Shira Diocese for the last eight years. And uh, in January, January 17, our house of bishop, bishops, uh, 11 bishops, met and we have been praying for uh, an archbishop for the um, province of Rwanda, especially since the current archbishop was going to retire. I was also planning to actually was doing succession planning for the verses that we had and so the bishops met and they elected me to be the next archbishop taking office in June, June 10. So you are welcome, you can be there, it will be a great joy, you can also surprise us, that's okay, it's acceptable, I think we have done it already here. That is a joy. We have, uh, over the years, enjoyed your prayers, your words of encouragement, and your support. You have supported us in the ministry, you have prayed for us, and you have encouraged us. It has been a great joy. Coming here is like coming home. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I remember my very first, uh, after I had been elected, and actually waiting to take over the basis, I came here and I met you. I met with you, Father Ed, and I remember in your office praying for me. And uh, we have come here again as we prepare to take office in June, and the same thing is happening. So you are praying for us, and we 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 will be in the office for just a short prayer. I remember the first time you came. It was to mediate a very difficult battle in the church among church leaders who are at war with one another. And so your first mission to be here was to bring peace and reconciliation among American leaders. Okay. And that's where you and I started. But people should know that was part of your ministry even before you were a bishop. Thank you. Thank you. And so we will appreciate your prayers. We will appreciate your continued support. We have been in the Shira Diocese. Uh, and Shira Diocese has uh, almost 104,000 members. It's also a diocese where we have seen God do some really, really great work of ministry with children, where we have 22,000 children involved in an early childhood program, three years to uh, six years of age, in 195 local congregations. And we have seen that. We have uh, a community Bible study that is going on that is about 39,000 people weekly meeting and, and growing, and we have seen the church grow. We have also seen our people in the church saying yes um, we see the people around us we have accepted christ as, a, as our as lord and savior and we have to be a part of the transformation that happens as people who have been created in god's image as people who have called to follow jesus as his followers we also want to see those around us those in the community around us coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But also, it's not only that. We wanted to attend to the needs of the orphans. We want to attend to the needs of the widows. We want to be used of the Lord to transform our community and to see the change uh, that can happen in the country. And we know that the best change that can ever happen. When people talk about development, I think development starts in our hearts. It starts with that verse in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I believe, that when we are a new creature, or when we have received the Christ, we become a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. And that newness in us is the newness of heart, of mind, of the whole being, that Christ transforms us to be his followers, to be his children and to, to live totally a transformed life. And when God has done something like that, we also see those who are around us, 
and we performed, we cannot just ignore them. They are created in your image. These are God's people, and therefore, we need to bring them back to the restoration and to the relationship that they should have with God, their creator, and their maker. And so over the years, we ourselves as a family, we have cared for 28 children for the last 12 years. These kids were really, really small, and now the oldest is 17, the youngest is eight, and we have seen a change in their lives. We have been, we, on our own, would not have been able to do it. It is the generosity of God's people who says uh, that God is also calling them to be part of the transformation that God is bringing into his people. It's by God's grace that we have seen these kids grow to be where they are, and we thank those who have come alongside us and helped us. In our communities, we have seen people, and we say they are poor, but they are not poor at heart. They may be poor, they may have nothing, but they are the most, they are, they are happy people, except when they have received Jesus Christ. Christ brings the joy in them. It's not the circumstances in which they live in, it's the trust, it's the belief in the person of Jesus Christ, who is their Savior. And so those people that we say they are poor, I wish you could be in one of our Sunday services. People in the villages do not have money, most of them do not have jobs, but they do in kind. And we have seen our church being transformed. In fact, we say that in our church, in our diocese, the giving has, has quadrupled from where it was when we first took over. Just to give you a sense, when we first went into the diocese, the diocese could not pay even for the few staff that we had in the diocese office. Today, and for eight, uh, seven, the last seven years, they have been able to pay the staff that are there. And you must help. Our congregations are required, or at least are wanting to give to support the diocese and to support their pastors and to support their congregations, but they don't have money. They don't work. So it's not unusual on a good Sunday to see a mother walking from the back bed with a basket on the shoulder or on the head of beans and coming to the altar and putting that down and say, I'm giving to the, this to the Lord. It's not unusual to see somebody bringing six or five or three eggs and bringing them four. It's not unusual to see somebody bringing a banana, a bunch of banana, and bringing that forward. It's not unusual to see somebody walking with two brooms in the hand and putting that to the front and say, this is my offering for today. It is not unusual to see in our congregations for somebody saying, it is a Thanksgiving time in my family, and we have a baby, or we have a grandchild, and we want to give Thanksgiving. And they come. And as they come to do Thanksgiving, their friends, their relatives, everybody has to join them. And they join them, and they all come, and they give their love offering to the Lord. We have seen that kind of transformation happening in the community, sharing what they have, reaching out to the poor and trying to uplift their living conditions and lives. We have seen when we have said we need to do a little evangelistic, I don't know you not to do it here, but sometimes on, on, on weekends, when a choir will say we are going to go for an evangelistic meeting, and they go, and the pastor follows, and they go there, and they sing on a Friday, they sing on a Saturday, they preach the gospel, and Sunday sometimes we have a new church as well. And people are worshiping. It may be 20, it may be 30, but within a very short time, we will have a big congregation. But sometimes the people who have seen that when Christ comes, transformation happens. And therefore, that church becomes the center of the social transformation of that community where people, children, adults, young adults will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's amazing to see when Christ comes into our hearts. Actually, 
people in the villages even know that, yeah, I'm a new creature. And if they think about the hygiene, they didn't think about it. They want to wash their little clothes and come on church on Sunday, but they will not come in fall. It's a beautiful scene when you come to Rwanda and you see people coming to church. Most of them do not come to drive to church. And they are walking a kilometer or two kilometers or three and coming down those hills. Rwanda has, they say it's a country of a thousand hills. They are more than a thousand hills. And seeing people just coming the hills and going up and going to those churches. And in our African setting, people who wear clothes of many different colors and, and, and bright. And it's a very beautiful picture to see that happen. But it is happening because of what God has done in the hearts of people. And so we are looking at, uh, in our dances right now, we have seen God do five major things that we have seen. We are thinking about it this morning. We have seen children coming to Christ, so we have a vibrant, strong ministry to children. We have seen people coming early and doing these small groups in Bible study. And when they come to the Bible study in the morning and they study the Bible, that is not just enough. They also say, so what is the need in our community that we have to meet as godly people, as people who also want to see Christ changing lives, but also more of a holistic ministry. And they reach out. That's when sometimes you get small groups of people who come together. They teach each other on saving, and uh, what you call saving and credit associations. They teach other, each other on saving. In the Shira Diocese, we have over 800 saving groups. These are people who are coming to encourage one another, to uplift one another, to pull their real resources together, and sometimes to let even that money go around, and then they go to this person who pays back, they hold each other accountable, so if you default, then your team has to pay in order for this to keep going. So in a way, they hold you accountable. And we have seen that happening, over 800 small groups happening in the diocese. We have also seen people reaching out and building homes for, 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 for widows and other people that do not have house. We have seen the Mother's Union uh, just this, uh, recently uh, buying a piece of land and building a house for, and then now building a house maybe is too much when we say that, but they could have a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars and just have a structure that one of that person would live, which normally they would have a place like that. So we have seen that happen. We have also seen in our diocese a healthy program that is designed for equipping pastors. And, uh, and we have seen over 250 pastors being equipped in our diocese. And eight of them actually going across the border to Uganda to do their master's degrees and 10 of them finishing their bachelor degrees and coming and are now serving in the diocese. We have also seen a diocese that when we took over was almost over three million dollars in debt. And now the, the, the diocese is healthy and is actually having little activities that have generating income that is helping uh, sustain the diocese. We just recently started a, a polytechnic college, which is like a community college here, that started four years ago, that now has 14, 1,500 students, and is self-sustaining, 1,500 students, and is self-sustaining, and is training young people. And the reason was this, that we saw a lot of young people in the villages, and these young people are finishing high school and they are not able to go to universities. So they move to the city, hoping that when they get into the city, they will find the jobs. And when they don't find the jobs, they end up going and living in the slum areas and they get into all kinds of problems, drugs, I mean, you name it. And these problems that they have in the city, 
Once a year when they go visit their, uh, their villages, they actually take some of the problems they have from the city, HIV, AIDS, I mean you name it, and they take that back to their villages. And you say, how can we curb this migration of young people? And even if they go, how can we provide them some skill so that when they go into the city, at least they can say, I'm a plumber, or they can say I'm a nutrition, or they can say I have a skill that they can say. That's how we started that particular school that we have now that is training 1,500 currently in the school. And we are seeing the change when young people are learning skills, when young people are creating jobs, when young people do not have to leave their villages, and those who leave, they leave at least with some kind of trade that they have and they have worked. You have also been instrumental in helping a school called the Sunrise. And this school, Sunrise, has done an amazing job. In fact, we are among the top 10 well-performing schools. And we just had a young man who, had, who was one uh, the top in the nation and, uh, and with uh, finishing uh, high school. And he's actually going to get a scholarship to come to a school called St. Olive in Minnesota. So this school is also doing well. So looking at what has happened in the diocese, and after also being as archbishop, we are moving from the diocese which is up north in part of Rwanda, ordering with Congo and Uganda, and now we are going to come to live in the capital city of Rwanda, which is called Kigali, and in that, that's where the see of the Archbishop or the office of the Archbishop is. And we are moving to that place, taking office June 10. And so you may say, so what are you going to do? Well, one, I'm going to be the pastor of the bishops. I'm going to be there as a, as a pastor of the pastors. But the pastor of the bishops, to support them, to coach them, to pray with them, to visit and spend time with them, and encourage them in their ministry. Second, we are looking at uh, equipping pastors. It's easy in Africa to see people coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But it's another thing to see them disciple and deepen in the scripture. And we wanted to train pastors so that they can turn around and disciple their congregations. And this is a huge need. We are actually going to try to strengthen our college. We have a college in Kigali, a theological college in Kigali, that has been very, very weak. And we wanted to put more effort into it. We have a structure that has been built almost eight years. It's there. It's a share. And we are praying that we will be able to actually finish it and, and see it being used for the training. We had, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, a friend, and a personal friend down in Birmingham who has given uh, uh, money to finish that building on the condition that we will raise a match for that money. So he has put up 100,000 and we need to raise another 100,000 to finish that building. But we want to be able to train, to train and equip pastors. Number two, we want to be able to do evangelism and discipleship in the whole nation of Rwanda, where we actually currently have 1.2 million uh, believers in the Anglican Church. But we want, to, we want to grow, we want to continue to grow. We also wanted to be able to bring in some sound financial management and system. That's sometimes a weakness in our, in our African continent. But I guess it's not just on our African continent. I think it's everywhere in the churches, I'm sorry to say except this one. <laughs> so we, we want to bring some financial management and system. We have seen that helping us in the Shira Diocese. We have seen the people trusting us, we have seen the people giving, because we have bring, brought in accountability, and we want to see that grow, and we want to see that throughout the Anglican Church of Rwanda. We also want to see, throughout the whole country, emphasize and pushing for this early childhood program. One, it is a child protection. Second, it is a child uh, spiritual nurture. Third, 
it is a poverty alleviation because as we bring them and we take care of them, the mothers are able to go and work in the bear gardens. Children are not left unattended. And then finally, we see that there's an opportunity, there's a door opener to get into the community. When you open your church for children to come without an invitation of who comes, is actually an open door into the community for that transformation that we want to see happen. So we want to welcome the children. And when you take care of these children, let me tell you, it's a wonderful church growth strategy. Because the mothers, everybody say, if the church is taking care of my children, I can go, I can be part of this. And then um, we also want to see, lastly we want to see, leading the Anglican Church of Rwanda toward a self-sustaining program. So that we don't, we win ourselves. So many times, uh, many times we go to the West and we have been generous people. I hope and pray that as we have been generous to missions, you are also generous to your own congregations, you are also generous to your own communities, you are also generous to those around you in need. You have been generous, so generous to us in the missions. And we would like to get to a point where our churches are not just extending, always extending a hand outside, but rather that we are coming to a point where we can sustain our programs without having to rush to raise money here and there. It doesn't mean that we will not have partners. It doesn't mean that we cannot encourage partnerships. But it means that we don't necessarily have to be on that social welfare all the time, but rather be on our own feet, be self-governing, be self uh, be able to proclaim the gospel, be able to sustain ourselves. Therefore, thinking what kind of programs can we put in place that can help us to be able to generate resources or even teach our people on giving so that they can support the church. So we will encourage you to pray for us. It's probably like a whole new domain, a whole new area we're entering, but we have seen it work in the places where we have been. And we therefore would like to be able to bring that to bear to the whole African country of Rwanda. I've gone in places and lecturing or pre making presentation on what we call business for missions. And business as missions. I was in South Africa, not too long ago in Durban. I was actually in Birmingham in a group called the, the, the uh, Lions Den. I'm going to Switzerland to do a presentation on um, church sustainability programs, Lord willing, this summer. And so we have been able to do that. Way before I came into the church, I was teaching uh, uh, development in different places and have worked with a nonprofit called Compassion International. So I want to take that kind of experience and that kind of learning and bring it into the Anglican church as a whole. Otherwise, we thank God that the church is very vibrant in Rwanda. And there is something that has just happened in Rwanda. There have been 700 churches closing. And the reason is we have a lot of little churches springing up almost everywhere. It's almost like somebody who doesn't know what to do, or somebody who doesn't have a job, wants to start a church so that they can survive. And in something this church, that they don't have any theological background, any biblical background, and the teaching that some of them are giving is concerning. And so the government is saying, why don't you train people in the in, in, in Bible so that they can be able to teach? Because this is mushrooming everywhere. Everybody is getting under a train starting at the church. So I think it's high time for us to equip pastors, to train them so that they can equip their congregation. We will appreciate your, uh, your prayers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm of course talking naively because I'm not yet in that office. <laughs> when I get there, I don't know the challenges that I'm going to be, but challenges are the same. So pray for the Lord's guidance, pray for wisdom, pray for some financial support that we need to be able to do the, some of the programs that we need. And lastly, I will give you a challenge and a prayer. In the last three years, I've seen, been seeing some of our visions. 
One lost a wife. The other had a wife who had, uh, who had cancer. She had to come to the States and people trying to help with here and there. Another one was in Nairobi for medical. We are seeing that some of our bishops are having some medical challenges. And the challenge that we have is that most of us do not have insurance. And I have taken it upon myself to pray and to ask the Lord to provide some us with some funding so that we can get insurance for each one of the bishops, watch over them, and for their help so that they can be able to take care of their congregations. And we are trying to raise actually 1,500 per family. There is, a, there is insurance we can get uh, from Kenya that is about 1,500 per family and for a whole year and we provide everything. There is even no copay with that one. And we can keep these bishops healthy while they are serving the Lord. And that is, that is really a prayer that I have with them. of them. And so there's a big undertaking. But we have taken it up on ourselves to try to raise 1,500 per family. You can join us in that prayer. And uh, if you want to adopt a bishop, that's fine. You can start with this one. No, this one. No. <laughs> but may the Lord lead you as to what God wants you to do. May you, as you think about, about mission, as you think about a, a church, minded, um, kingdom-minded church. May God use you to not only look way out there, but also to look in your own community, to reach to the next door neighbor, to, 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 to let them know about Christ, because that's what makes the difference. The joy that comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior sustains you. May God use you for His glory. May God enable you to support your church, to reach your community, and to proclaim the gospel wherever He may want you to be and to go or to start. God bless you. Thank you very much for your prayers. Thank you. I think there's a little time for questions. The next service is 11 15, I guess. So, questions? Yes. Archbishop, I know that the diocese was involved in reconciliation efforts when they were most needed. And I'm wondering if that's still going on and how that is going, if so. Thank you very much. Yes, that is still going on. Reconciliation is an ongoing program when you look about it because I think things change in a different way. It is, it is still going on, it's not as, as intense as it used to be, but uh, we are trying to still bring reconciliation into the villages and we are doing it through different programs, through Bible studies, through activities that, that we, do to, we do together, encouraging people to realize and to see that we are all created in God's image and we are God's children and we need to love each other, to support one another, to care for one another, to live in unity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, can you describe some of the careers that you're preparing um, young people for in Mubarak? Uh, uh, again? Can you describe some of the careers that you're preparing Thank you very much. Uh, Mubarak is the polytechnic, I was telling you, is the community college I was telling you. We are teaching construction, so what you call civil engineering. We are teaching uh, electrical, we are teaching computers, we are teaching finance, we are teaching uh, um, welding, uh, hotel management, and uh, tourism. Um, what else? It's those kind of skills and trades that we are giving to young people. So people who want to know Probably people want to know how to make bricks, people who want to know how to lay bricks, people who want to know, you know, all those kind of trades. People, uh, very soon we'll be starting on working on cars and motorcycles. We haven't started that one, but very, it is, we are praying for that and hoping to get that started. Any other question? Yes. Uh, Archbishop, could you teach us a short 
uh, later on uh, it's language such as Jesus loves me, something very short. Yes. Let us speak that. Thank you, thank you. Can, can you say Imana Nziza? Imana. So let me say Imana. Ni. Ziza. Imana. Ni. Ziza. And that means God is good. Imana. Ziza. So you can say Imana. Ziza. Which language is that? That's King Rwanda. So you are all Rwandans now. <laughs> Therefore, my congregation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Imana means If we would like to make financial contributions to help your ministries there, where do we direct our funds? Here. Well, um, all, all sense. Right here. You're yeah. 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 That shouldn't take care of. <laughs> <laughs> but there are two ways. One is you can give to your church, and Shireen will get that to us. The other is we have a non-profit organization in Memphis called COM, C-A-L-M, COM. So you can make checks to COM. And uh, the address is, uh, uh, I yeah, I'll that. give it to her. So I can't remember all the zip codes and things like that. But thank you very much and I appreciate that. Thank you for the Let's give all hands. morning in Rwanda. We want to stay in East Africa for a little bit longer and I'm going to invite Catherine Ranger to come up here. Good friend and she's on the global outreach team here at All Saints. She's going to talk to you a little bit about our partnership in Uganda and an opportunity for you to be involved. Well thank you to Bishop Rwanda for reminding us of how much good the gospel and Holy Spirit can do when it's allowed to. Um, the other African mission we support, in addition to the Diocese of Shaira, is Uganda Christian University. And Congo. And, and Congo. That's right, there's three. But I'm going to speak to you about Uganda Christian University because, once again, for the fifth time in seven years, six. Six time in eight years. Yeah. Um, the Uganda Christian University Jessup International Moot Court team has won their national competition, which means they're coming here. We get to meet them, just as we've gotten to meet and get to know uh, Chantal and um, Bishop Banda, and we need some help though. They need help. Because they've been coming, winning so frequently they no longer get a hotel scholarship. We need housing, we need meal assistance, we need prayers, um, because not, I don't think any of these guys have been to the United States before, so that's a huge uh, shock. What? Metro tickets. Metro, oh, yeah, there'll be metro tickets, uh, Starbucks cards, uh, or Panera cards, that sort of thing. But there'll be an email going out to the congregation, and I want you all to pray. Uh, if you live near a metro, we need housing, because that's the easiest way for them to get to the venue, which is the Hyatt on New Jersey, just behind Union Station, um, behind the Capitol, New Jersey Northwest. Um, there are three men and three women. Um, one of the men is, the, is their coach, Arnold um, Agaba, who has been here before. This will be his third trip as a Jessup participant in some way, shape, or form. Um, if they can be housed in pairs, that would be fabulous and, and easier for them. Um, so please pray about um, hosting some of these students who's who are seeking to do in Uganda what Bishop Mbana has been leading in Rwanda to make it a more just and healthier place through the gospel. Because that's who, who these folks are. So please pray about hosting. Please pray about um, assisting with food for people who are hosting. And, and please pray about um, donating gift cards, metro cards, that sort of stuff that they can use while they're here. Thank you. When are they coming? They will be here at the end of March, probably, I'm guessing, the uh, week right Monday, Thursday. The, the, the competition is Holy Week. Okay. Which is soon. Always the first week. So soon. soon. So first of April through 7th. They'll probably be here Monday, Thursday, which is like about the 25th or so. And they'll stay through the Tuesday after Easter. Richard? I was just going to say, uh, the, the pains 
and the Rangers could tell you, because we, we've been hosting guests from Uganda Christian University, that you will, you will probably not have more stimulating dinner table conversations than with young, talented, aspiring believers from Africa who, who desire to serve the Lord, desire to serve their country, um, desire to pursue justice. It's just, you push away the, the plates and then you look at your watch, you know, two hours later, it's like, it's a work night. <laughs> so, uh, it, is, it, is it is a tremendous blessing and it's a tremendous opportunity to actually meet some of our mission partners who live so far away. So um, please pray about all those things and there'll be an email blast going out reminding you and then giving With you the opportunity to respond. Yeah. Thank you. Five minutes is fixed. <laughs> 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 <laughs>